Sustainable Building Materials. Welcome to segment one of the Carbon Solutions Green Building Series on Sustainable Building Materials. My name is Michael Amish and I'll be your virtual green guide for these next three segments as we cover a broad range of concepts and materials related to sustainable building. I'm a co-founder of Indigo Green Building Solutions, a sustainable building supply store located in Gainesville, Florida. I'm a current Florida Green Building Coalition certifying agent and a lead green associate with the United States Green Building Council. In this first video segment, we will talk about sustainable building materials and why they are an integral part of any sustainable building project. Here we will learn about sustainability and what it is, how materials can be sustainable in terms of waste reduction, source reduction, and certifications and standards that can assist you in finding truly sustainable materials. This segment will also touch on the major ways sustainable building materials can be regional, rapidly renewable, recycled, and certified, as well as how they can contribute to higher indoor air quality and daylighting. Are you ready, my virtual friends? Let's get started then. When we consider the construction of a green building, whether certified or not, sustainable building materials help achieve three broad goals. They must reduce demand on limited resources from the built environment during their life cycle, increase the built environment's energy efficiency and energy performance, and do less harm to the environment and the occupant's health. These three broad goals all meet the definition of sustainability. Sustainability is now a widely used term and generally recognized as the ability to meet the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs. If future generations consume the limited natural resources in the same way we currently do, our built environment will rapidly grow to unsustainable levels. If, however, we begin to value our natural resources differently, and as in Natural Capitalism by Paul Hawken, we reinvest in the natural capital, such as energy, materials, water, fiber, and topsoil, then we will have the basis of future prosperity. In terms of construction, sustainability is at the heart of any green building project. It is a fact that the built environment uses up a staggering quantity of resources, and according to the United States Green Building Council, or the USGBC, the impacts of both residential and commercial buildings in the United States include 72% of all U.S. electricity consumption, 39% of primary energy use, 38% of carbon dioxide emissions, 40% of raw material use, and 30% of waste, or 130 million tons of construction and demolition debris annually. To understand sustainable building practices, we must first understand the concept of the triple bottom line. In traditional business, the bottom line represents the return on investments made. When we consider green building, we consider the triple bottom line, which includes economics, environment, and social responsibility. This concept is most often visualized as a three-legged stool with one leg representing the environment, one leg representing economics, and the other leg representing social responsibility. When missing just one of these legs, the stool of sustainability cannot hold itself up for very long. This is also referred to as people, planet, and profit. Now, in order to talk about sustainable building materials, it's almost impossible to discuss this without touching on the most common green building certification in the United States, that is LEED. LEED is Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design and was developed by the United States Green Building Council. Founded in 1993, the USGBC is a 501c3 nonprofit organization of individuals and groups whose aim is to guide the development of buildings that are built in an environmentally responsible manner, are profitable, and are healthy places to live and work. Many green buildings will now and in the future be built with LEED in mind. For this reason, it is important to recognize the LEED point system that builders, owners, and architects utilize. This is a system in which the total points determine the level of green certification the project will be awarded. 
Although we do not want to focus solely on LEED as there are many other worthy green building guides and certification processes, including the Living Building Challenge or the Passive House idea of construction, we must stress here that no building materials can be certified LEED. They can only help a project gain certification. The choice of materials then becomes a critical part of certification, so choose wisely. Not all materials are made equally. In terms of waste reduction, some materials can find a new life before they are even transformed into a new product. Some materials such as brick, metal, wood, carpet, wallboard, glass, plastic, cardboard, lighting, accessories, topsoil, fill dirt, and rock may have a creative useful purpose in the construction of a new or existing building. In 1996, 136 million tons of construction and demolition debris was generated in the U.S., equivalent to 2.8 pounds per person per day. And according to the EPA, 57% of this waste was generated by non-residential construction. Many times this waste does not have to be simply landfilled, and if the material cannot be directly repurposed in the current project, it may find a new life in a future project. Many businesses are seeing the economic benefit of material reuse, and in Gainesville, for instance, we have one business in particular whose sole purpose is to salvage the material from deconstructed buildings to be reused by some other project, both big and small. So, yes, one project's trash is another project's treasure, indeed. Beyond this... Materials that cannot be directly repurposed can find a new life as a raw input to a whole new material. For instance, stone-like countertops made of paper are actually thousands of sheets of recycled cardboard and paper compressed together with resin. These countertops are beautiful examples of post-consumer waste gone green. In all of these cases, source reduction is the number one goal, with the focus being on reducing the amount of material used thus reducing the amount of energy and non-renewable resources used. While reuse and recycling must use some energy to repurpose material, the further we focus on upstream or the prevention and minimization of industrial production, raw inputs, and pollution, the better in terms of source reduction. According to the EPA, source reduction has the greatest impact on reducing waste because it begins at product design. Source reduction can involve small or complete changes in manufacturing technology and design, raw material inputs, and product formulation. Many companies that are manufacturing sustainable building materials also recognize the need to reduce their own manufacturing's energy use as well as pollution prevention. When looking for sustainable building materials, you must also consider the way it's manufactured in order to qualify the producer as not only legitimately engaging in source reduction, but also furthering the goals of sustainability in general. By digging a little and asking questions of knowledgeable suppliers or the manufacturers themselves, you should be able to tell rather quickly who is greenwashing and who is not. In this way, you can get to the heart of environmentally preferable purchasing processes. Environmentally preferable purchasing refers to the selection of products or services that have a lesser or reduced effect on human health and the environment when compared to competing products or services that serve the same purpose. We're going to look at the EPA to this one again. When looking at environmentally preferable products, the EPA says we must look at how that applies to raw materials as well as the manufacturing, the packaging, the distribution, the use, then reuse, the ongoing operation, maintenance, and ultimately disposal of that product. Those products that are found to be environmentally preferable would be those that are recyclable, energy efficient, low in embodied energy, low in toxic substances or have none, have reduced packaging, and are water efficient. There's hardly one golden green material that will meet all of these criteria, but there are ways that a manufacturer can make the production of their products as environmentally preferable as possible. For instance, in the case of a material, one company might decide that making their product more environmentally preferable might be to actually design the product for use with less material. 
By doing so, the company can save money while also saving energy and future resources. In terms of architecture, one way we can have less material is to design buildings to be smaller or simply incorporate existing buildings into a project.